Okay then Rob, we're back. You're back. I'm back. We had a great response for the first video. I think so. You look at the comments, do you? Yeah, really, really good. So, good. nice one for that. Um, but yeah, so it's been the World Champs, World Feeder Champs. South Africa, World Games. So, there were shore teams, carp teams. Yeah. Um, the ladies were there. Ladies were there. Masters. Masters were there. Obviously, totally different style of fishing that anybody, see, anybody sees in the UK. Yeah. Wild That's carp fishing. Wild carp fishing, um, obviously, for our feeder guys. A place called Bloomhoff Dam. Yeah. Obviously, I've never been to South Africa before. Some of the other lads had already been, maybe, I think, four years ago. Yeah, four one of the first ago. ones, wasn't it? One yeah. Place. Beautiful place. When you drive down, we used to we, we were driving down every morning to the venue. Um, Eddie Bryden was our driver. What? What do you call it? The Stork. The Stork. Um, he was our designated wader out as well to check the depth of the pegs. That's why we call him the Stork. So we've got the Stork <laughs> in the driving seat. He was driving us down. We've got a car that looked a bit like a Fiat Uno. Yeah. <laughs> We looked like the in between. We looked like the in betweeners. There was me, <laughs> um, Phil Ringer, Adam Wakelin, occasionally Lee Kerry. If yeah, he decided to, to go in the Uno, to go in the Uno. Um, the Uno's where it was at, basically. Yeah, all the cool kids yeah. went in the yeah. Uno. It would take us forty-five minutes just to drive along the shoreline to get to our pegs. Unbelievable. That's how big. When you just showed me a map of the venue, yeah, and the that, vastness of it. That wasn't it even. Do it just no, that forty-five minutes wasn't even. A, a quarter or an eighth <laughs> of, of, the the, of the circumference of the venue, a huge venue. And when you look to the right, you see the water, you yeah. see the fish jumping out, you see flamingos in the edge, you see <laughs> ostriches and stuff like you that. You can just about make out the far bank of the venue. And then you look to the left and you see the ostriches, the, the odd jackal, gazelles, obviously strange. Just yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. wildebeest, things like that. Yeah. Beautiful place, but it was just a nothingness as well. So you look out and you see across the plains the odd tree, the odd thick area of grass, but really it was just so vast, Fast, everything yeah. was so fast. Brilliant place to go, weather was fantastic. You could probably just about make out the sunglasses. You're not as badly burned as I was expecting. No, I, I got burnt one day. Been a bit ginger, I thought you were. My nose like... started to peel. Did you see? We, we had the snoods with snoods and that, they helped massively. Because um, the heat was just such a dry heat, yeah. but it did, it literally peed it down for two, three days in a row. I saw a picture of the van getting stuck. Thunderstorms, yeah. It was it, the Uno, <laughs> the Uno passed with flying colours in the in the mud pit. But the tackle van wasn't a bit um, left a bit to be desired. Yeah, tackle the van, the driven by professionals. Yeah. We thought they were the professionals, <laughs> the, the more uh, seasoned drivers. <coughs> they bogged that down pretty well. They bogged that down. Um, obviously, as we know, the result wasn't what you expected or not what we expected not what we hoped for yeah and um, wherever we go when we're fishing world champs wait did you finish just for people who don't know we finished fourth as a team yeah and um, wherever we go we just we, missed out on the medal just missed out on the medal we were lying in third position after day one but we sort of we've not traveled all the way all the way there you go for gold don't you? we're going for a gold medal and we really thought we got a chance because you know let's get right carp fishing when you look at our team um, it screams carp fishing it screams you know, success really with that team. Yeah. So we've come away a little bit deflated, but I think we've got a lot of things right. Yeah. Um, as in tactics, we probably just missed out on a couple of little things. But so looking at the weights, the fishing was really, really good, wasn't it? The fishing was fantastic. You, could not, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't knock the fishing one bit. Um, although there was better areas than others, there wasn't many of yeah. those areas. So the fishing as a whole reasonably fair, as fair as you can get in fishing, but you know, there was some yeah, dodgier could, could areas, bit, middle of sections maybe, which was a bit, a bit um, dodgier. Then we missed out second day, biggest thing that we missed out on was probably targeting smaller fish on the second yeah, day. You say grass carp was a grass carp with a small reliable fish. target. Yeah, they were, they were more reliable than the carp. The grass carp were in grams, they're probably sort of like two to four hundred grams. Yeah. Um, 400 was a, a big one. Yeah. So on the gear we were using, there was, you'd swing those fish yeah. in. And whereas a carp was sort of like 500 grams to maybe, some of them were pushing two kilo, but that was, you know, anything over a kilo, we were calling them units on, on the day. So we'd shout, just had a unit. Yeah. You know, anything over a kilo was a, bit, a decent fish. But we were catching a lot of those fish in practice. Grass carp, we'd have a few of them mixed in as well, but they weren't showing themselves yeah, as like, didn't feel like these fish. Be a we didn't feel like we were going to be a target, but it's how in these in these countries it's such a shame how the, obviously how they treat the fish is a little bit it leaves yeah. something to be desired yeah. a little bit. 
sometimes. So well, in, in the other, let's get it right. In most other countries, fish are food, aren't they? So yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, totally it's, it's a totally different to culture. What we have, so. so what what happens is is once these fish get caught a couple of times, you know, they need to go somewhere and sulk a bit yeah. and recuperate because they can't just keep feeding. We were catching a few fish, although it was a big expanse of water. Catching a few fish with hook marks in and signs that they've been caught, yeah. you know, the odd fin that they've got a bit of damage. So we knew that there were repeat catchers. You probably couldn't keep catching the same fish over and over again. And as it proved Sunday, a lot of the carp had just had enough. Yeah, they just got spits. They sort of ran really. to the ends of the match then for a little bit. And a bit of a gutful. Yeah, grass carp were probably a, a better target. Um, so, so you yourself, fourth. Yeah, I'll just agonizingly close. Agonizingly there. close. I think 120 grams, which is four ounce. Yeah, it's, it's four ounce amount, off the bronze medal. Um, to be fair, brilliant to get into the team. Um, yeah, this is the first time you fished both days. Isn't first it? time I fished both days. Yeah. I fished. Um, I fished two years ago in Portugal. Yeah. Had a horrendous time. I, I hold my hands up and say, not really my fault. Yeah. I had a blanket, a, a big block of weed in Portugal, just sat in front of me all day. I just it's made you peg a nightmare. Couldn't fish. So it was nice to actually get on the bank, and get on the pitch, and actually show what you can do catch some fish. Yeah. So practice week was really good. Um, we all caught a lot of fish, things were good. Obviously Dean is the, the manager, he's given give me the first year of fish. Dean. First year for Dean. Yeah. Um, obviously hopefully there's big, big things to come yeah. in the future. So, you know, it's first year, big things to come. Caught loads of fish, we had, you know, great experience. Like I say, just driving to the venue was an experience. Um, seeing all those things, catching different fish. First day of the match, I've settled down. We were using the ground that we were using was basically like a corn based ground. Yeah, you say all the ground was a local, there's no census really or anything like there's that. There's no, there. none of your census yeah, based you're using like locally that. made it's ground based. Locally made corn based. Corn based ground based. Yeah. You could probably, if you actually went in the supermarket, make it. You could almost probably make it yourself out of the ingredients of the supermarket. Mm -hmm. So, corn based, or maybe they'll be a tiger nut base and ground up stuff yeah. in there, but varying degrees of Stickiness and, and stickiness and sort of like coarseness, really. Yeah. So we we were using a really coarse ground bait in the end. So I I preferred the coarser coarser ground bait to others, and it was probably. Were you mixing that really wet or anything like that, or is it just? I felt we could have mixed it wetter than we did. Yeah. Um, we end, we mixed everything in the morning, so we'd get up at sort of five o'clock, start mixing a ground bait, um, so it took on plenty of water, and I actually felt looking back. When I messed around with the ground baits after the second day of the match, because obviously all these ground baits are new to us, yeah. after the second day of the match, I've sort of messed around with the ground baits. I felt we could have mixed them a little bit damp if we'd have gone back again. But you live and learn. Yeah. Um, started the match. It wasn't about feeding loads of bait, although it was carp and massive, massive venue. It wasn't about feeding loads of bait. It was about just reading the peg and easing your way into the day. Regular feeding. Chucking. Yeah, regular chucking. And I called it when I was over there, just gathering some fish into an area. Because once you go as a fish, you've got a million indications. Yeah, just, that a case of working out. There was a case of working out to catch them. So sometimes it was small feeder, big hook bait. Sometimes it was big feeder, lots of particles in the feeder. Sit on your hands and wait for your toe, wait for your tip to toe round. Um, just all these little things, and it was really interesting. All Sounds the little brilliant fishing. Yeah, and because the fish was so, everything was so natural and so raw aggressive. and aggressive. The tiniest change you made made such a difference yeah. to how the fish fed. So you, you'd think, whereas in the UK sometimes you feel that it might take two or three chucks to, to get something to work, that there it was instant. bang, it was instant. It was, it was really good, really interesting fishing. So rigs we were using, standard Got feeders. a little one here, haven't you? Yeah, we, we actually come up with this. Um, I'm not so Show sure. Show that to the camera, look. Yeah, get you a little close up on that. Look at this, look. Come prepared so, this week. So, as we were tying up rigs... So not a lot different to... What we always use, is it no, really? But as I was looking, what I'd usually normally use is a swivel yep. sliding on the main line to attach my feeder to, and then run it down to a stop or a couple of stops above a twizzled loop. But I was looking at a couple of lads set up and I thought, well, oh, that looks interesting. I looked at um, Waco, who yeah. I was rooming with, I looked at his setup and he'd got a little Drennan uh, swivel bead yeah. without the swivel, a single stop, and that bead wedges over, wedges over the stop. 
obviously covers up any knots. Yeah, it's a beautiful, smooth. Beautiful, smooth boot, and it was really good. I'm not too sure if it's going to be right for sort of like smaller species where. But for car, that extra bulk it fishing. might be a bit of a pain. But for bream, bream and stuff, it's going to be nice. Yeah, isn't for it? bream, if you're using a sliding rig, I think that's going to be great. So a, a snap link sliding down. No feed links or anything like that. Um, and then. Obviously, just attach okay. the hook length to the end. 50 centimetre hook length? 50 centimetre hook length. We wanted to use as short as possible, so yeah. we you know, made sure we actually measured them one day. Um, so they were back up. So um, after, you know, to make sure that boom was right, we actually made sure that they were within sort of like a centimetre and yeah. 50 centimetres to be as so, close yeah. to the feeder as possible. Um, 020, 022 hook length and a big size 10 got foot. Got them here? Show them to the closest camera. Yeah, channel, probably got, yeah. So what? We've got here, so, what, so I, I use low I use um, low vis, that's probably is that a light one. I use no, 020 and a 10. O20, um, I used 022 on the match days, but I used 020 a lot of the week, never had a problem. Yeah. All I needed to do is make sure, because there was a few snags there, I just needed to make sure that when you hook to snag, you hook them broke before your main line. So, hook choice. Yeah. <laughs> We've got A1 team feeders. A1 team feeders. Is that what they're called? Oh no, cart feeder, yeah. In a 10. In a ten, yeah, um, lovely over that. Beautiful hook. Well, I'd say I, I used um, so sharp. O twenty, really sharp. We were trying out all different hooks throughout the week, and because um, we were really concerned about hook pulls. Yeah. When the lads went before, it was all all about how hook many you pull. could land rather than you know how many hooks. They were hooking enough fish, but just not landing them. Yeah. So we thought hook pull, hooks might be the key to that. Trying all different hooks. But as the week went on, we found that really it was how you fed the peg. More important. Yeah, because <clears throat> I think what was happening, you were losing fish because you were foul hooking them. Because it's interesting that you're only using 020 because it's obviously talking to you before you went out. Yeah. You were having all sorts of ideas of massive hooks, massive lines and stuff. Yeah. And then in the end, I used 020, 020, I used 022 in, in the match days. But we were really wary on some of the peg. We made sure it's got some tied up in 020 because, like I say, you don't want to break your main line when you pull for a snag. And there was quite a few snags there. So, I just made sure that if I got on a snake, I didn't get busted on 020 all no, week. That's yeah, strong. That, um, <laughs> 020 low vis is strong. That low vis is really strong. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get busted on any fish all week. The next thing that we had to think about was obviously feeder size. And again, it was a bit of a mismatch. So we ended up fishing five hole and four hole sort of Nisa feeders, maybe the odd sort of like guru style feeder if we were casting a little bit of a long, yeah. longer distance. but. Smaller feeder was better when there was a lot of fish there, but the five square was good at getting fish into your peg. Um, yeah, so that one to bring some fish in. Yeah, and depending on how you mixed your, mixed your feed, um, depending on you know what consistency you made your ground beat, we'd sometimes use the chuck that little bullet. This little fella. Yeah, because chucking a really sloppy chucking a really sloppy one in. Yeah. Who's this? No. Chucking a really sloppy. It's like popular. <laughs> chucking, people coming in the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> chucking a really sloppy um, feed of feed of yeah. bait in was great, and obviously with a normal open end, you can't chuck that slop in. But with so that, it held with it. With that, the, the, the lead at the base, yeah, you could just chuck a bit of slop it. out. Like I say, all those little things made a massive difference. Um, so going, so middle of the match, first day, I'm catching a few fish. Lee carries my bank or not? Um, you having a good match? It was going steady, it wasn't yeah. amazing, but Lee kept saying to me, top five in the section, yeah, top five in the section. Well. And I think if all the lads can be top five in the section, yeah, you did, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be hard to beat. So Lee kept telling me, top five in the section, top five in the section, doing all right, they're doing all right, a few fish down the river, a few fish down the river. The chap next to me had caught a big uh, catfish, probably about six kilos. Like a nice fish, and I thought, well, I can't, there's no, I can't oh, beat six kilos. It's about six yeah. kilos. For, they, they weighed it actually after the match, six and a half kilos. And I thought, oh, I'm behind him now. I can't, I'm going to struggle to bring that back. But then I've had a really, really good fourth yeah. hour where the tip has just gone round, just gone round. Out. Real nice fish, some nice units. You know, catching real, real nice fish, I was using double corn, so I was catching slightly better fish than, than, than some of the guys around me. I thought, this is going all right. I tell you what, I might, might beat this chap now. And what I've done is I've set my sights on him because I thought, he's got a fish, he's caught a few other fish. Yeah, he's a good target. He was a good target to sort of like have a look at. And then the tip's gone round. I picked it up. I've back wound and then I've had to take the clip off. <laughs> and then this fish, I thought this must be a big carp, but we've not hooked any really big yeah, carp. Yeah, real monsters. Just it's, thinking of any of that has got it's some just monsters. really, really slow, a lot of slow motion. It's just really, really slowly got to about 50 metres out. And I was only fishing at 20 odd metres. So then I thought, 
I wonder if this is one of them catfish. And then I remember <coughs> um, someone saying to me on the way there, all the catfish, you have to decide whether they're worth playing yeah. because they take so long to net and you might be better actually fishing the cod yeah. and breaking up. So I thought, I'll just see if I can turn this fish. So I pulled and put as much pressure as I could without with me thinking the hook level is yeah. going to break. And I pulled and it just pulled me back. <laughs> and it went another 20 metres. And I just thought, all right, okay then. And look around, not, not many other guys were catching, so I thought, take my time. See where we can get with it. It went a long way down. I thought at one point it might tangle up with the next peg. And that would have been... Yeah, if it touches their lines, it's gone. If they, if they get tangled, tangled up, if they get tangled it's up, disqualified. it's disqualified. So I thought, please don't get tangled up. But anyway, come back round in, in front of me, sort of like, 15, 20 minutes has gone by now. Because leave behind, behind yeah? Leave behind me, because I've took, took the mick out of Lee all week for yeah. standing up when he's playing a fish. You know, he'd done, you're the, old, he'd done the old look at the, me, I've got a fish The dark off. in Lee, yeah. as he used to call yeah. it. Yeah, he was playing a fish. I didn't stand up all once, once um, during the week, and Lee said, I've seen you standing up playing a fish, so it must be big. <laughs> <laughs> so he's come up from the other end of the section, and then... Um, Oh, this fish is just circling in front of me then. And bear in mind, on sort of like normal match gear, this fish is circling in front of me, clouds of mud are coming up, because it's only very shallow, it's only sort of like a foot and a half, two yeah. foot deep at your feet. Clouds of mud are coming up, and obviously I'm re- by now I'm realising what, what fish this is. It can only be a cat. It can only be a yeah. cat. And um, all week, I'd set up a spare landing net, a huge landing net. You've got it there. Come on, let's have a look. Uh, it was, um, obviously, this isn't... <coughs> Can't use that in the no, UK, obviously. I suppose highly illegal in the UK, but abroad, that's a it's a beauty. In it it's that. a big old net, so so light, isn't it? Considering so light, obviously, I set up a spare landing net because I'd seen pictures of these catfish, <laughs> and I thought, surely you're going to need a big net for these fish. But everyone, had, you know, it all took the mick out of me all week for this yeah. net. Lee shouts to me, Rob, you might need to beach this fish because <laughs> a lot of the, apparently the locals beach the fish because you can't physically lift them up. You have to let them run out of water and beach the fish. So he shouts to him, Rob, you might have to beach this fish. I said, Can I, am I allowed to do that? He shouted back, am I allowed to do that? He says, I don't know. I'll ring Dean. So he's, rang, he's on the phone to the gaffer. And as, um, <laughs> as he's on the phone, sort of the fish is getting closer and closer. I could see the feeder popping out of the water now. And I thought, I might be able, I'm going to be able to net this with me, with me special landing scoop, net. Yeah, with me, with me, give it a big scoop. And I could hear Lee in the background, just as I netted it, and he says, hello, oh, no, Dean, Dean, Rob's got a huge catfish <laughs> on. Can he... Can he net? Can he beach it, or does he have to net it? Forget it! Forget it! Forget it! He's got 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 it. <laughs> and I lifted this fish out, and it was obviously in the net. It looked really impressive. Probably about 15, beautiful 16 fish. pound. Beautiful, beautiful fish. fish. 15, 16 pound. I put it in my net. Um, <laughs> obviously, Lee was like, "That's the section." Yeah, that's, that's it. But obviously, Carol fish. I had, I had three more. I actually had a big, big, big cart next chuck as well. Um, so like a perfect day. Oh, it just worked yeah, out perfect. perfect. Um, I think without that catfish, it would have been touch and go whether I'd have won the section. But you were still right up there. I would have been first or second yeah. by grams. Yeah. And I think the 20 minutes that I took landing, I'd have yeah. caught at least, I was catching really well at the time. So I've got a section going to the first day, the team are in fourth. So that fish proves just how strong that gear is. Yeah, of course it does, yeah. You, you know, played a fish like yeah, that. Yeah, obviously right? lovely soft rods. Yeah. I've used um, CTX, free, my free spirit yeah. CTX rods. I've had some, uh, same blank as the normal feed rod, but some guides moved a yeah. little bit further up. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to use casters on reels, which is obviously a big reel. So I wanted to make the guide slightly bigger and... Did you land that catfish on my reel? Uh, I might have done. <laughs> That's what I'm done. Like. So I've obviously got my own... I borrowed two off you, no. Yeah. I'll have a look at the... So blobs and... The marker on it. I put a little bit of marker on to show that it's your reel. Um, but one has gave up. I hope it is. I've got a bit of grit in oh, one. No. So right. I might give you a good one. <laughs> so I bought, I bought a brand new one before I went, making that one. Um, <coughs> Second day, obviously, like I say, so teams, you won your section. So teams in third place. Yeah, you won your section. section. You're buzzing. I, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to going to tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, as I've said before, all the way through the match, I'm just trying to do my best because it wasn't necessarily down to a bit doing well as individual. Because I've seen it in when we did no good in Portugal, when when Mick um, Mick Viles won a medal. Yeah. But the team did no good. Yeah. And we were so down. Yeah. That mixed medal really the, so the rest of us lads teams, teams first. yeah so it was all about um, Mick was running my bank yeah because Liam Mick swapped didn't they Liam Mick swapped Lee Fish um, Mick was my bank runner for the next day and it was all about sort of yeah can I come top five can I come top mm-hmm. five fish in the day 
I had a nice start, but then as the days gone on, it was just so I couldn't I couldn't Different. get by. Yeah, I couldn't get by. Obviously, a lot of guys. It was grass carp day. I was sort of you've not even really fished. No, around. but I was catching the grass carp as the day went on, and I knew that they were the fish to target. But I knew that I was behind, so I needed to catch some bigger carp. Yeah, so I had so to sort of like find that happy. Too. Yeah, I need to find that happy medium. I've come to a line at fifteen meters, which is a line we had at fished all week. Mm. But we knew that the fish were coming in. The fish were coming in all the time. Um, so I come to a line at 15 meters, and I just thought I've got to make this line work. So I've just fished it, fished it, fished it. Then the fourth hour, I sort of had 20 fish in the fourth hour, grass carp, but a lot of them um, like nice carp as well, the odd unit. And um, and then I swung a grass carp, which is obviously good yeah, at home. Yeah, but it was it was six, seven hours. Yeah. So I swung a grass carp, which on a size ten up with not one fish had dropped off all week, and this fish just hit my knee and fell back in. And I Mick, looking at the time. Mick said to me, Mick shouted to me, Don't be an idiot, stop doing stuff like that. So obviously I stopped swinging my fish then. And then looking come the back. way in, come the way in, I was just like so close to win, to come in second in the section. Yeah, I was third in the section problems. in the end which would have individually got me a bronze. Obviously the team didn't fare so well. Um, but obviously for me personally, it would have been, would have been you know, not, uh, uh, just yeah. something to take back. Salvage something. Salvage something. Yeah, something, something to take back. So, so a real highs and lows thing. Average of everything in South Africa. Presentation was brilliant. Dancers, stalls, music, you know, a guy that was like brilliant. Was Dizzy brilliant. Rascal with a couple of dancers. He got on the stage doing a bit of rap. Um, Jeff Ringer loved that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, he loved that. that was it. And then um, they did the presentation. Hungary won it. Let me tell you, Hungary are a force to be reckoned with. They did um, really well at Phoenix, you know. Thomas Walter, obviously, he guides them, I think. Mm -hmm. um, proper force. Holland second, again. Another big team. Re re really, we, we, we always sort of like. We always feel we're on top of Holland, but we always have some massive yeah, battles. Battling yeah, we're battling it out all the time. And then Italy third. Italy obviously, once a small fish came into play, caught loads yeah. of fish. Um, we were fourth. Which again, Italy, you know, they're. I they're know, it's so in. disappointing, Joe. So <laughs> disappointing to go that, that distance, put that much time in. Because you know, I focused yeah. my whole. Yeah, on the that. whole of my fishing, really, on, yeah. on fishing the world champs or getting ready for the world champs. And. Six months of like oh, packing yeah. a suitcase, see and then in the suitcase, seeing weighing the suitcase, seeing if I've got enough gear in there, taking two feeders out, putting some hooks in, just to get the weights right for the airport, then packing your rods in those to be beaten by the crowds of men. Yeah, or well, yeah, yeah, just for the team. Just for, it, 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 to be fair, it is mainly it is the team that's the because obviously when mm. we're all when we're all down, wouldn't have mattered if I'd done well because everyone else would have been down. down. Yeah. So it was just so, you know, it was a real comeback, come yeah, down. Yeah, a bit of a flat ending. Yeah, but obviously the experience was great. France next time, um, you know, we'll try and do a little bit better. You've done something that a lot of people will never get a chance to do. Yeah, of course, yeah, so yeah, of course, it was great. We've got to put it in perspective yeah. sometimes, not Yeah, you have, yeah. Um, you've been doing things more UK based. Yeah. Decoy. Decoy, yeah. Winter yeah. League semi final on Saturday. Yeah. Was it this Saturday? This Saturday, yeah. Right, right. Um, so preparation's all in that. Right. Can you, you know, tell us your times. team? Uh, yeah, I think I can, yeah. Go on then. Um, obviously, there's five angles at Decoy. Right. Five angles on the drains, right. which is like March, 20 foot, yeah. rated drain. There's a few other yeah. little sections and stuff. And I think on the Decoy, it's myself, yeah. Andy Gelder, yeah. Nick Speed, yeah. Andy Power, yeah. and Oliver Scott on. So just rubbish guys, yeah. Rubbish guys. And then on the drains, I think it's Alan Scott on, right. Dave Brooks, Simon Fields, Nicky Crooks, and Dave Brooks. All oh, right, so basically you've got two P teams. We've got two excellent teams. <laughs> but as we all know, it's uh, right. you know, a decoy can be really, really peggy. I yeah. saw that on Saturday when I went. I had yeah. 92 pounds on Saturday, which was sick, and then 80 odd peggy. Yeah, so it's fishing well then, isn't it? Fishing really well, but I've had 90 odd pounds. Did you win the section? Yeah. Right. Um, and then down the other end, there's people not getting a bike, so it's, right. you can see how easy it is to get it wrong. Right. But it's mild, sun's out. It is. What, what is it? The weekend? I bet it's sort of like teens of the weekend, 15, 16 degrees. 15, 16 isn't it? degrees forecast. Right. Okay. So hopefully that shoal will be splitting up a bit and there's yeah. some fish to be caught. What are you chucking? Bomb. Is that it? That was how I chucked the weekend, yeah. What? 
bomb corn. Bomb corn, yeah. Right. yeah. Just real old school tactics. Really? Um, tiny little bomb. It, it wouldn't have mattered. Really? They were just, the fish were there. They, they were down to my left. What did you say? They were down to your left, and if you could have cast to your left, right. you'd have 300 pounds. I, I drew peg 18 on you, which is two pegs out the is corner. Is that strip? Yes. Yeah. Two pegs out the corner. The fish were in the middle of the lake. They were in 20, 22 area. Right. 20 wasn't drawn. You can just tell the fish are in that space because there's no yeah. pressure on them. Craig Meadows is opposite the space and he's catching. Right. Trev Robinson. Is he fishing bomb? He's fishing pole. Right, okay. Trev Robinson at the other end of the space is catching. I'm sat there, can't get a bite. So I was like, oh, yeah. Chuck my bomb up as far as I'm going. There's a rule at decoy, you can't go past the next platform. Right. Which, obviously, you can't push it. And they're not very wide anyway. So you haven't 40 and a half metre limit on your pole as well. So you're a bit limited to how far you can get yeah. to them. And when I've gone to my limit, my tip's just like, you what, just like a fish stack of fish, yeah, right. ridiculous. And I've got, I ended up catching 90 odd pound, and I must have caught 80 pound. Did they come your way or did you yeah, push them? Yeah, they came this did way. Did you push them? What happened was, Craig Meadows, who was on opposite where the fish were, came my way, and I think he just oh, sent he them my way a bit. Right. And the lad opposite me started hooking them. And then they used to stop hooking them, and then they ended up in front of me. Right. And then they've obviously wanted a bit of a feed as well. What and is it? So F1's, big. F1's no, a big cow. Eight pounds, isn't it? Yeah. Right. There's a few big barbers as well. It's really nice fishing. But it just showed me how it could be a mile away from them. Right. So what gear are you using? Uh, just like 13 up clamps. Really? Little look, 18 up, KKM look. Right. Nice little sharp look. Right. Just old school bomb and car. Really? Yeah, it's lovely. Chucking it in. Mm -hmm. So. Right. But yeah, and then the week before I won a section on Beastie with. 42 pounds, totally different day, all together, got a load of silvers, right. load of roach, load of skimmers. What, chucking bait and fishing chucking, short? Chucking maggots in, yeah, fishing short, right, right on my street. I've not been decoy for ages, it sounds it's like... Oh, it's, it's been brilliant. The, 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 the strips sort of, are so peggy. Is it? But, you know, when you're on them, it's amazing, like 160 right. pounds one last week. And then, but then on Beastie and Horseshoe and that, where you can feed a bit of bait, that, that's a bit of me, that is. Big, yeah. big F1s are like five pounds, four five pounds. Right. I mean, the only thing it is, last Saturday, I'm chucking my bottom out, and I'm looking at this, these strip pots and they're 30 metres wide and there's five of them in a line. We sat there and I'm looking at my phone with one eye on what you're doing. Mm. And this thing's come through and I've seen you with your big catfish. Yeah. And there's a massive ocean in front of you. <laughs> and I'm sat on these little I strip pots and I was just thinking, I think I'd rather wear Robbie's right Yeah, now. of course. But That's obviously my head's into that, so it's really, really good. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. But obviously that international style of fishing, it is just so far removed mm. from UK style fishing. Yeah. And I'm so, uh, you know, I'm so glad that I've made the decisions to do to all do that. that yeah. You do see a lot of different things, you do sample different styles of fishing, but you do need to understand that, you know, there's loads of decent, there's loads of brilliant anglers in the UK, but it there's takes everything. a lot for someone to actually change their fishing to actually go and do well, that Where, style where of would you ever put in this country size 10? Barbed up, yeah. double corn. I mean, we've been to places in the t uh, target species of. Uh, Bullets and gra uh, yeah, catfish, catfish and stuff. little catfishing, and you just can't practice that sort of thing in this. So you've actually just got, maybe got to make the commitment and just say, "I'm going to go and do that thing." Mm -hmm. And you, in those international events, it's just so, it's just so apparent the tiny, tiny things. Detail, you yeah. know, you change your feeder from a 20 gram to a 30 gram, and all of a sudden you get a run of fish. You put, you know, a bullet feeder on as compared to a side weighted feeder, and you get a run of fish. Yeah, yeah. Just all these little tiny things make a massive difference. And it just shows that feeder fishing can be a bit of a chuck it out when the river's oh, flooded it, or... Though, isn't it? It's far from it. You know, the more you get into it, it's like any fishing in it. The more you get into it, the yeah, more those little tricks. The little tiny little, things, yeah. tiny things. I'll tell you what was interesting, the flavouring side of it. Yeah, this, this is something, because obviously the goo originated there, didn't it? Um, goo originated yeah. there. Um, you know, I use a bit of goo in this mm. country. Now we got given, because obviously everything's so raw over there. Um, we just we got given when we got there just a load of bottles with different, different flavourings in and different <coughs> potions in and it was like that so we'd get a bottle like that a sprite that bottle a or a, a bottle of, a, an empty bottle or a drinks bottle and it'd have some flavouring in it and um, obviously for match days there's a certain limit I think yeah. it's 100 mil so we have to decant that into a smaller bottle decant the word decant yeah. beautiful word and um, Throughout the week, we were messing around with these flavourings, and some were just... And with a goo-like like flavourings. Like yeah, bright with, green. with sort of that fluorescein, yeah. fluorescein in them. Um, and I think, you know, the, the names just blew my brain. But I think <laughs> we ended up using one called Devil's Fork. Oh, lovely. Because you go into a tackle shop in South Africa... And there's loads of them. And... When I say loads, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flavourings, little pots of flavourings, 
in the tackle shops. It takes up more than anything, more than hooks, more than feeders. It's just flavourings. I suppose um, if your ground bait's also primitive. I think the ground bait, because it's been so primitive, they use these flavourings yeah. to, to, to balance the thing out. So we ended up using one um, called Devil's Fork. I'm sure it was Devil's, Devil's Fork. Fork. I think I'm sure it was Devil's Fork, which was a mixture of a couple of flavourings and it yeah. obviously evolved over the years. And um, what, what was it a sweet? Was it? It smelled quite it? sweet when you smelt it, but it smelled quite sweet. Yeah. Mm. So we ended up using that. Um, and what we'd do is occasionally we'd have we'd just give a little square in the feed and chuck it out, and all of a sudden, bang! You yeah, get, get a few fish. It was great for grass carp. Those grass carp sort of, I think it was the cloud. They just honed in on it, and it was. But you couldn't keep doing it because I think yeah. the cloud pushed. They followed the cloud away. Right. Okay. So you couldn't keep it's doing like an it. Impact thing. It was an impact thing. And um, when it was flat calm, you could maybe do it every other chuck. Yeah. But when there was any sort of wind on it, and it just seemed but strange that. Halfway through the match, both days, the wind turned into sort of like a gale force. Yeah, I noticed on the old catch pictures, the waves are like this high. And yeah, at the end of the match, I turned my keeper around, put it on the back of my box, just and stop filled it. up my bucket of water, put that on my foot plate, just to stop, just to stop my box falling in, because I think my box would have toppled over if an obviously with my fishing there. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of the grass carp were trying to jump out of your net as well, so in practice, yeah, I, lost, a bit of an I lost a fish each day. On the first day, as they were weighing in in practice, Luckily in practice, I caught a beautiful grass carp, probably about two and a half kilo, five, that six really pounds. Fish, real nice fish, probably, you know, um, you know, two or three foot long. And it was really nice That's fish. Big, yeah. And um, as they were weighing it, it just jumped out of the net. So as I was waiting for the weighing on the second day, like, I'd, got, up in I'd got a strap around my um, keep net. Yeah. I'd put a landing net in there. I'd put the top of my grammar bowl in there. Making sure. I'd put the big catfish net over the top <laughs> and the side tray on top. So there's nothing getting out of there. Um, but I was still so, still so worried, yeah. Still so worried. What have you got coming up? So obviously Wind League final this yeah. weekend. And then that's it for a little bit. Is it? Yeah, I've got a little bit of just probably do a bit of local. Yeah, I, I think I'm the same. Two so we've got coming up in about two, three weeks' time, the no. Iberian Masters. Oh, go on. I haven't. Golden Rock final. You're not fishing it. I'm not fishing it, but Marcus is. Yeah, you're Mac is. Yeah, my mate Macca qualified in his fourth ever match. Yeah, that was a decoy. That was a decoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fourth of match, he's in the final, so I promised I'd go and sit Borrowed with him. Borrowed your gear. Yeah, he's a good lad, Macker. Yeah, I, pro I promised him go and sit with him, and uh, hopefully he can catch him. Let me tell you, he's got a chance at Arthur. He has. He's got a real good chance at Arthur. Um, Chuck Method. Will you go off? No. No? No, as long as you're bad, you can see. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. But no, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be my next one. Mm. I'll probably go over there a couple of times with him, to be fair. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah nice lad, Macker. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably get a bit of gear ready. When's good. Iberian? To be fair, it's the end of this month. Uh, sorry, the end of next month. I'll get some local matches in in between. Um, I might try and get on another golden rod if I can get a ticket, mm -hmm. just to try and get into that final. Yeah. But my focus now be on that Iberian Masters. Yeah. Um, more carp fishing. Yeah, more carp fishing. Another trip, Spain, eighty blokes, yeah. international rules. You know, really enjoy. Yeah. And in March, when in theory the weather should be a bit pantsy. It yeah, might be nice well, to go if you remember last year we had the beach from the east. The beach from the east. And while you were sunning yourself in Spain. While I was sunning myself, my missus was ringing me yeah, crying because yeah. the, the, the boiler would break. Yeah, <laughs> Shall we try something different? Go on then. And give big big Kez a ring. If you want to. Get your phone out then. Let's ring him. Ring. Should we ring him? What, put him on a loudspeaker? Yeah, let's put him, on the, put him next to the mic down there. It'd be nice to get another person's yeah. perspective, isn't it? We can see, um, we can see, let's find him. Hello. 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 Can you hear us? Yeah. Right. How are you doing? We've just done the run through. Of, um, we've just had the chat. We've just had the chat. We've just told everybody how excited you were for me to land my catfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was buzzing. And we've just told everyone about the rally, the rally driving um, to the venue every day. Yeah. And we want to get your take on what happened when we were over there. Your day, I'll tell you what, run us through your second day of the World Champs. What you did. Well, it was a, it was a very good day. Oh, great then. <laughs> okay, then Lee. Okay, then, Lee, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Go on, it was a very good day. Yeah. Oh, you're back, you're back, lads, back. Yeah? Yeah, are, are we back or what's going on? Yeah, no, no, carry on talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Right, OK. Uh, yeah, it was very good. I mean, obviously, you've given the rundown, Rob, of the most important things, like rally driving and uh, seeing wildlife every day. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the fishing itself was out of this world, wasn't it, really, when you think about it? Um, 100 pegs every day, loads of bites to go at, wild grass carp and carp. Um, proper incredible. Um I tell you what, I mean, my match day on the second day was really interesting because bearing in mind that we'd been in the same section on the Friday and we'd all caught big carp, or when we say big carp, we're talking about like three, four pound fish. The units. And then, yeah, units as they were commonly known. And on the day of the match, uh, on the second day, it, there wasn't really... Uh, a large amount of units showing. Oh, no. And all of a sudden, Lucky at unit. the end, there's all these grass carp, isn't there? Like, the catching... I mean, the winner of my section, Felix, had 200 fish for 50 kilos. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen anything like that while we'd been there, had we? So... No, we'd not, we'd not seen any numbers like that. But I think the fact that Italy had caught the fish that they'd caught on the first day maybe should have set alarm bells ringing that there was a few smaller fish to be caught. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair comment, although Italy were aligned fourth with 35 points, which is not a particularly dangerous score, so you don't feel when you're actually there in it like it's going to be playing a part. No. I think I think the fact that we were in the position we were in, Bob, we were like eight points off the lead, so... We were sort of going for it with that little bit of extra, you know, well, we're going to catch big carp and everybody else is going to fail, that that, that, that mentality. And, uh, you know, if we'd, have, if we'd have had similar sort of conditions to what we'd had during the week and we'd have caught those carp, I'm sure we'd have won. But obviously hindsight is a wonderful, a wonderful thing. thing. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, even if we'd have had just being on the right side of a few weights because looking at the results there's a few people who got beat by quite a lot of places by just maybe a kilo or a few grams I think maybe if we were just on the right side of those weights we'd have still kept a medal per spot so I think it was maybe too late to sort of change tactics dramatically anyway because we met, I don't think looking back we could have second guessed that those bigger fish had stopped feeding no, absolutely not. And I think that, I mean, the only thing that sort of occurred to me was, obviously, that, that everybody crept in, everybody kept, came closer and closer. It was like, the closer you came, the more you had to come closer. And then I was thinking back, and I was thinking a lot of the week, we caught some fish a little bit further out than that. Mm. So maybe there'd have been those carp, at, the, at a distance we'd have had all to ourselves but the thing is this is all with hindsight I mean I'd win every match of fish if I had hindsight yeah, yeah he's so, a good angler hindsight isn't he yeah he's, he, he does well so uh, you know you can't we could only go on all the information we had and when you actually think about the information we had and all our winning weights in practice were all based around units and better fish so you know it Yes, it's easy when we look back at it to say maybe we should have been a little bit more uh, prepared for the smaller fish. But I think, you know, I think we were a bit unlucky, really, with the conditions that have occurred because that was the first time we'd seen it flat calm. It was the first time we'd seen a wind at the bank. It had been off your back most of the time, yeah, hadn't it? So, you know, it's just one of those, isn't it? It's hard to... It's hard to assess, but obviously disappointing at the same time. Yeah. Well, hopefully, when it, the World Club Champs is there in a couple of years' time, and my team qualifies and your team doesn't, we can put it right. Yeah. It's not very nice, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's very highly unlikely. I just have you qualified for that competition yet? Well, it's anyway, like, Lee, uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll speak yeah. to you soon. <laughs> Oh, I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it, and, uh, you know, I'll tune in every week as an avid listener. <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> there you go. Lee Kerry. Lee Kerry himself. Yeah. Very smooth, very seamless. Very seamless. That's what you get when you spend so much money on this equipment that we've got. Yes. Anyway, so, Deco for me this weekend. Iberian Masters for you coming up. Yeah. We'll be back. We'll when are we coming back? When are we coming back? As soon as we can. I want to find out how you do a Deco. I want to find out whether your team <clears throat> win. conquers, which I think... So it's a tough, tough ask. I still think with the team you've got, it's even money whether you do or not. Um, because the team that you've got is so good. If I was better, I'd be better on your team. So, okay, right. good luck. Thank you. Come back, tell us how you've done. Don't forget to subscribe, everyone, to my channel. I'll put a little link up here to Rob's channel as well. Because you do it's some nice bits there. It's just good, yeah, it's good. That's yeah. it, just up there. Co cooperation. Um, subscribe down here for mine, up there for his. Perfect. So, see you later, guys. Everyone, and see you soon.